Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Wooly Thistle Shopcast. I'm your host Corrine and this is Maggie, also our host today. And uh, we're back together again after mm -hmm. a crazy busy summer. And uh, I was out for the last couple of weeks as well. And um, just want to start off by saying to everybody who filled in, they did a great job. So thank you for filling in and I'm sure they'll be back on the Shopcast, Jill especially. Um, who else helped? Did anyone else or? Well, we had Renee when she was here too. That feels like a long time ago, but also that, not that, that long ago. That was quite a while. That was back in July. Yeah. So, um, well, it is still August. <laughs> Hanging on to the Just last barely. bit. Just yeah. That's right. But anyway, um, it's good to be back. It's good to be with you. And um, uh, yeah, I should probably, I'm out of practice. So uh, <laughs> the Woolly Thistle is a yarn store. We're online and now we have a brick and mortar here in West Lebanon, New Hampshire. And we champion and specialize in woolly wools from the UK and Europe, as well as some homegrown yarns too. So if you want to go on a journey with your fingers and feel all those different fibers and textures in wool, we are your place. And we hope that you um, do some exploration with us. That's what we love to do, isn't it, Maggie? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we have this shopcast. It's typically every other week, but through the summer, we've tried to do a bit more. It's been a little... Um, I don't know what we've done, but it's been quite a lot. <laughs> it's been quite a lot. And uh, yeah, I think we'll be getting back to our regular routine at some point. But, you know, we have so much to blather about always, don't we, Maggie? Yeah. Um, Maggie, how have you been? I haven't seen you for a good few weeks, three weeks. I, I've been good. I've been good. Um, you know, the boss was away. Um, but it was good, good times. Let it the good was, times roll. Yeah, it's been good. Um, it's been fun having the shop open. Yeah. Um, and being able to watch Jill um, with customers. Well, that's her zone of genius. She helps all of you. Yeah. yeah. She's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and it's been fun. Occasionally, I pop out and say hello and um, or help out <laughs> if Jill needs help. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's been great. Fantastic, because you had the shop pop in August while I was the shop gone. Pop. Thank you to everybody who stopped by, whether yeah. you were here for the shop pop or just because we were open. That yeah. was wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, lovely, lovely. Yeah. So that was a success. Sorry I missed it, it. It was bad planning on my part. There was so much <laughs> bad planning <It's> okay. <laughs> on my part. I mean, I think, too, as we get busier and busier, you know, vacations land when vacations land. And, uh, yeah, you know. well, that's it. You know, and I think also being sort of a creative person, you know, as we all are, I think having vacation is really important to let our brain just settle in and um, percolate away in the background. I certainly found that happening for me, which is fabulous. It feels very rejuvenating and exciting to have some good thoughts and um, and th then you become productive again, you know? So I'm very glad. I was, um, I'm glad to be back, but I had a really lovely vacation with my kids. Uh, we went to the Greek islands and it was fantastic. You can see some reels uh, that I took uh, on my own personal uh, Instagram. But uh, yeah, it was a I great think, time. I think very few people know about I your know, own personal Instagram. I know, I know. It's, um, <laughs> we can put it there what it is and you can uh, check out Santorini. Uh, we also went to Crete, but I had COVID for the entirety of our time in Crete, except oh. for our last day. So I was isolating most of that, which was a real bummer. But, um, and it, if it's hot here, it's really hot there. It was hot, but also um, lots of AC available. So that was good. And it was a drier heat, I think too, or at least you had that sea breeze as well. So um, being back here, even though it's a little bit cooler today, I am. I went for a walk and I found it really hard to sort of cool back down. It's very humid. Yeah, it's very humid. Yeah. As we say in Scotland, it's close. It feels very close. So anyway, yeah. um, tell us all about the shop and how it's been the last couple of weeks that I've not been here. Because really, I've just seen you. This is first thing Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, uh, well, you and I will have lots to catch up on. But, yeah. um, I mean, the shop has been great. The big thing, I think, is still our, our shop front. Yeah. Um, also, other big thing starts today. Our sweater cow cast yes! on is today. Yes. Um, so, Jill and I hosted last Friday. Um, Jill and I hosted the, over Zoom, a swatch party for those who yeah, are. Yeah, how was that? I missed that. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, we hadn't, this was our first time doing anything like a swatch party. And so, knitters were encouraged to either 
bring their swatching and they could knit um, during the chat or if they had already swatched and had any questions about their swatch yeah. before they cast on. Fantastic. So we answered some questions. Yeah. And, and I think that came about because um, actual cast on is on um, Labor, Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. So we wanted to catch you guys while you were at home. Mm -hmm. And a swatch party just makes total sense. So I will be looking forward to watching that because it's on YouTube. Or will um, be? It will be. I think everybody who signed up for the Cal, you're going to get a link to um, to watch it. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, so it was really one. interesting. I told Jill, I'm like, it was a little bit like everybody was sort of like, a, hi, my name is so-and-so. I don't usually swatch. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of like, personal. we weren't shaming anyone. We were just encouraging people to swatch. But that's great. It sounds like people <laughs> were swatching. Lots of confessions happening about usual practices and I why they it. do or don't. And, yeah. And so it was, it was delightful. It was fun to see everybody and hear what they're going to be knitting and what yeah. they're working on. And yeah. And have you made a final decision on yours? I have. I have made a final decision. I'll show you my swatch in a little bit. Yes. And uh, I have not swatched it, but I did come in and start to pull yarn for mine. Thanks. So we can talk about that too. Great. Sorry. Way off track here. Always. Um, very hard to keep me on track at the best of times. Couple of uh, housekeeping things we don't have any ads on our shopcast um, because we hope that um, you will come and shop or at least come check us out or tell your friends about the woolly thistle and so the woolly thistle sponsors these shopcasts so no ads for you which is nice um, also we have a pips program which is our loyalty program every time you shop with us you are in pips and you can cash them in with your purchases too mm -hmm. it's free to join i would recommend doing that and then they're automatically applied when you when you shop correct um well when you get to a certain amount and you're able to redeem pips there's a button that you're prompted to um yeah. press and it's very easy it's very easy yes and also send us your videos for a spot on the show i really enjoyed the last one i saw which I've, i'm forgetting her name but she knitted the um oh my gosh i'm thinking of two different ones now yeah there was a young lady she was fabulous and then before her there was another um contributor who was talking about her tuku um yeah. finished object too so really enjoying those so send us a video if you'd like a spot on the show we'd be happy to include you and there's a form on the shop website under connect or somewhere like that mm -hmm. check the show notes down below for all the links of all the things we talk about we work really hard to give you um ease of access to what it is we're talking about and they're down there um segments in the set sorry were you going well to i was going to say you can also if you visit the shop there is a under connect there's a shopcast tab yes um and the show notes are sort of repeated there too which makes the links if you're navigating on your phone i think a little bit easier yeah actually on the shopcast yeah. i mean on the website uh there's nice photos and things like that yeah. of what we're talking about so it's quick and easy for you um segments this episode mm -hmm. we have kelsey joining us woohoo um and she's talking about sweater patterns in her ravelry favorites and how to sub uh, in the woolly thistle yarn, which I love that. And Emma is here to uh, talk about needle felting her steak. She's going to give us a demonstration, which is fabulous. I've already been thinking about doing mm -hmm. that this time for the sweater cow. And she'll be talking about Briggs and Little, which she's a great fan of, and which we now stock here at the Woolly Thistle, mm -hmm. which is exciting. Um, okay, so Maggie, we're neither of us wearing any woolly bits, I don't think, nope. today. Still too warm. Not even socks. Not even socks, neither of us. So what about uh, whips? Do you have any whips? I do. Like? I have a bunch of whips. Um, let's see. I have them in my zipper proof. List. We had this bag a few years ago. Yeah, I love our, it. It was part of our fan pack. So, um... I've got a couple things going on. So since we have the um, sweater cowl starting and I hadn't finished my vest uh -huh. for the vest cowl, oh. I've been working in earnest on my oh. vest. It doesn't look much different uh, to you, but it's longer. It is beautiful. I have, I've made good progress on this. Oh, God. Um, this is the Cruden vest by Isolde Teague. It's um, absolutely it is gorgeous. In, it is in... Um, Jameson Smith. It's in Jameson and Smith, and I'm using the colors of the original. And it's pattern. going to just pop with your eyes. Yes, it's going to be great. I'm very excited for it. Um, yeah. And I only have... I know, I have little gnomes on my <laughs> stitch. So we, have, we brought in these stitch stoppers, and I couldn't resist the gnomes. I have um, a Highland Cows, or as we like to say, Healing Coos. Yeah, you'll mine. see. I have another set on my other whips. These, they're great for just kind of holding things on. Yeah. Um, so I only have like another. I'm doing the little Peary right now, and then I have one more of these to do, and then I'm ready to do the armhole steaks. Awesome. So it's quite motivating. I'm hoping by Friday I will be cruising along. 
Um, now, Maggie, I'm sure we've talked about this, but are you? Do you hold um a yarn in each? Yeah, I hold so one in each hand. Yeah, and is it? Are you sl just slow going? Um, it or, is just slow going. I find it takes me quite a while to get um a couple of rounds done. Like yeah. I knit a lot yesterday because uh, I was having massive <laughs> allergy attacks. Aww. Um, and I think I only. I was about halfway through this, so I really got like an inch done, and that yeah. was with a lot of time knitting. Yeah. It's just slow going for me. But it's but you know what? You are going to wear the this to death. I I swear to goodness, it'll be yeah. so worth the effort. Um, it looks like it's quite a small motif, so you're not having to catch floats, which is nice. No, I don't love catching. Floats. No, they they slow you down so, even more. No, yeah. but it it's, it feels like you know traditional fair isle. There's oh, no, it's beautiful. No long floats. Um, Isolde really. Um, she's a great designer, and this yeah. is uh, no exception. I've yeah, I've long wonderful. wanted to knit this too. Yep. Uh, I'm I'm really it's been in my queue for a long time. Mm -hmm. So and with the sweater cow coming and you want to clear clear is, the deck. Well, my plan is to cast on another JNS Fair Isle project, and really? I was like, well, I'm nuts if I have two going. I think that that might just break me. Okay, <laughs> okay, yes, actually, I was watching the Facebook live from my COVID bed. Yeah, uh, did I mention I had COVID? Yeah. <laughs> On vacation, so I was watching that, and um, you were talking about this, and then you talked about what you're going to be knitting, yeah, and it sounds and like you're still going to do that. You're still going to go I, with, yeah, I'm still going to do over it. I have color I've work. No, um, I, I really don't think I'll even become close to finishing it. No, but um, that's okay. But it's okay. Um, you don't I, get prizes anyway. I don't get prizes anyway, <laughs> and honestly, I really want the finished garment. Yes. Yes. So, so I'm, is this I'm just embracing it. So you're you're for when you're doing color work, are you more an FO knitter than a process knitter, would you say? Like you want that finished. I think it's object? a bit of both. I enjoy the process of knitting it. It's just very slow for mm -hmm. me. Um so But you know, there's so, nothing wrong with that either. You know, it's not. It's I think not that a race. there there is a lot of um I feel like there's there's a certain amount of like, oh I gotta get all these things knit. Um and there are some knits that'll just fly off your needles. Mm -hmm. Um this isn't one of them. Mm -hmm. And so my expectation isn't that it's going to fly. I'm hopeful that I'll get it done. I'd like this done for Rangbeck. Yeah. Which feels extremely doable, especially since there's no sleeves. There's no sleeves. So I'm just I've just got to keep going. And then even up here, you're you're you've got the neck steak, so the your, the your amount rounds. of fabric you're making is less. Yeah. Um so And it's not complicated adding these steaks to the neck and the arms. It's, yeah. you're not doing anything fancy. You're doing a it's little bit of shaping. It's my first time doing neck and arm steaks. Yeah. So you'll I'm, be fine. I'm looking forward to yeah. it. Um, and that'll prepare me for the sweater cow sweater, which also has neck and arm steeps. Yeah. Good. Um, good, 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 good. And then Emma's section um, will be all about needle felting your steeks, which, mm -hmm. do you know, for the longest time, I'm like, how does that work? Are you felting it back onto the actual finished fabric? And I, I realized after lots of thought <laughs> that don't be stupid. Of course not. <laughs> Is when it's still all steeped. That would ruin your fabric. Yes, of, yes, of course it would. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you do it before you cut the steak. You just, you know, you, do, well, we'll let Emma tell you all about yeah. it, but then you cut after that. I'm like, oh, slow yeah. going here. Do you have it's anything okay. else to show us? I do. Well, so because this is such slow going, um, and I know my next project will be slow going, I went sash diving and pulled out some hand spun. Oh, fun. And got just a really chunky knit going. Oh, fun. So, um, what is this? this on the needles. I don't remember the name of the sweater. I can put it here. It's a it's sweater. From, it's from, well, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you just cast on another sweater? Um, but this one's like a lopey weight yarn. Oh, and um, it's your hand spun. And all it's all it? hand spun. Oh, um, oh. I can smell it. It's so um, good. So I've I'd, I'd had enough. It's a, like a giant bag of just hand spun. Um, so I figure when my hands get kind of like hurty from yeah. the, like after a while, they do just get a little like they need a break. Yep. This, it can just go round and round and round and round. Yeah. So. Fantastic. This is sort of my. Is it, this for you or for one of your kids? Or? No, it's for me. Hmm. Kids, they don't know. I don't get um, sweaters. <laughs> Um, not yet. <laughs> they don't get any. I mean, well, I did a couple sweaters last year for yeah. the girls. Yeah. Was that last year? I think mm -hmm. I mean, it was. was earlier this year. This is very beautiful and soft. Is this your Romney or? No, it's, um, I don't actually know the name of it. So I had bought, so the, the teal and the pink and the yellow are actually from Kingdom Fleece and Fiber. Lovely. Um, and then the gray I had purchased on D-Stash. It was just some roving. So it's all woolen spun. Mm. Um, and I had purchased it on D-Stash from a local gentleman who Whose, whose wife um, was going into a care facility. Uh. Um, so 
it was nice to spin it all up and I'd long it's been sitting since I finished it and I knew I would want yeah. a sweater so yeah. I'm like you know what I'm just gonna do it good for you so your your little sweater on the side from your other sweater color well because this one it's just it's so relaxed yeah but it's just it's easy enough I needed something to just go around and yeah. around on that wasn't yeah Tiny, absolutely tiny needles and i still have socks going but those are such tiny needles i needed something <laughs> More tiny, needles. tiny needles yeah yeah so great that's that and yes. then other than my swatch but what, what are about you? what about socks mrs i don't have any socks with me uh it is we are still at the end of august here i finished my husband's august socks okay so you're on and, track and um yeah i've i've uh i actually purchased a ball of wis for a friend he wants um, he's asked for more socks, and he is knitworthy, so um, I will be knitting him. I think it's the chickadee um, oh, sock fun. pattern yeah. in WIS for Very September. nice. Very nice. Do you want to see what I'm knitting I on? I do want to see what you're yeah, knitting. I that. So, um, I did not do much knitting on vacation because I was vacationing or dying, pretty much. Yeah. So, um, But I did manage to get a sock out. I don't have a sock blocker handy, do I? I, too, I think I'm on track for our year-long, very loosey-goosey um sock cow mm -hmm. but i'm knit, i knitted another stripey pair and i'm just mixing up the stripes now i've got like little double stripes uh, one two three and then single stripes this of course is in rambler i'm just i have several skeins of rambler in my stash and i'm just knitting them up so this is my second um sort of stripey pair that i've knit recently so that's the natural with cinnamon fern and wild clover correct and it's so delicious and scrumptious. Mm -hmm. Very happy. And I'm doing my little heel turn again. I think I saw that you did that too, where you mm -hmm. knit one pearl, one uh, knit one slip one, and keep that going over the yeah. heel. Although yours almost looks like a boxy heel. Yeah. So I do. I do a third, third, third. Okay. That's typically my recipe, which I'm writing up. And if you want to knit some of these, um, hopefully we can get that working for you um anyway so i knitted that and um i have the second one nice. i've just i've just started the heel flap so ta-da yeah so that wasn't much but it was something and so i did finish that before i left the flowers mm -hmm. of four Troys. you saw this before came out tiny um and i i'm trying to say that i meant it to but it really <laughs> Not really. So I'm knitting another one, and I've been doing a lot of math oh, to. It, I, I'm sure it would fit you, Maggie. Yeah. If it goes missing. <laughs> and um, so what I've done is I've sort of cheated. I've done a provisional cast on under the arms section, and now I think this was your idea, Maggie. Yeah. Um, now I've just um, put yarn on uh, waist. Uh, what am I saying? I put stitches on waist yarn for under the arms, and now I'm doing the arm shake shaping with a steak you can see my steak right here and um i'm doing it with the math uh, that i gleaned from that one and my gauge and everything and i'm writing this up as i go so this is sort of my test of my math for that one and for the so for the arms and the neckline yes exactly so i will i will continue to knit this this is in the original colorway that i designed the four Tros hat and mittens in it's sort of like this i love this i could see me wearing this at Rhinebeck if i'm fast enough um i would have loved to wear that one i love those colors but it's just a little too tight oh i've got needles stitches coming off um i don't have my little heel and coos on this one i was gonna say you need your little stitch stoppers mm -hmm, i do um so yeah so i'm thoroughly enjoying i just cast this on not too long ago um and i find this go this goes pretty fast for me honestly it's very potato chippy it's very um it's symmetrical so i know what comes next i don't look at the pattern even to figure out what i'm doing it's i've done it so many times now yeah that it's okay so yes i'm going to continue and knit this up and finish the top and if it all fits then i can knit down and finish it off that way so that's what i'm knitting on right now um, I am making plans. Well, why don't we talk about what you're knitting? Why don't we talk about what you're knitting for the sweater cow? Well, should we go to one of our segments? Yes, sorry, I then, can talk. Can I? <laughs> I know, because otherwise we will just keep going. Yeah. Um, you know what? Before we do that, I'm going to announce a winner. Yes. 
winners. We have a lot of practice. It's okay. <laughs> um, so our first winner from the last Shopcast of a twenty-five dollar gift card to the Woolly Thistle is at Janet Kemper nine one seven seven, and Kemper. Janet says, "I am really loving the Shopcast. I signed up for the cowl and will be knitting my first sweater." <gasps> Um, thanks for all the inspiration. Um, the woohoo was just me, not Janet. But Janet, you have won a twenty-five dollar gift card to the Woolly Thistle. Hooray! If you can email us at info at the Woolly Thistle dot com, put prize winner in all caps. We will get you your twenty-five dollar gift card. That is so inspiring, Janet. Well done, you. I hope that you really have fun knitting along with us and knitting your first sweater, first of many. Mm -hmm. um, let Janet inspire you out there too. If you've not knitted a sweater, come and join us. We have the best, best, best. Uh, community both in mm -hmm. Ravelry and Facebook that will help you if you get stuck or anything yes. and it's just a really great you know everybody cheers each other on so anyway if you would like to be in the running for a, a gift card next time all you need to do is leave a comment down below subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up and that way you are entered to win wonderful well done um and now let's go over to kelsey um and see what sweaters are in her ravelry favorites and how she would sub a yarn yes sounds good we'll see you on the other side hey it's kelsey again um in honor of our upcoming sweater cal i just wanted to come in and talk a little bit about a few patterns that have been in my favorites for you know a little bit or a long bit but things that i've been thinking about that have a few different characteristics um but don't necessarily call for a yarn that the woolly thistle carries. So something when I say carry, like call for most patterns, they when they come out, it says like, oh, it was it's knit in this yarn or that yarn. The sample, this sample is this yarn. This sample is this yarn. There might be more than one. Um, it may not be the same one every time, but it's it's something that the designer has used when they were designing. So yarn substitution is something you can always email us about at the woolly thistle. Um, emailing info at the woollythistle.com and we're happy to help you. But I just wanted to go through a couple of patterns that I have seen and I think are pretty cool and what yarns I would use from the Woolly Thistle um, to knit them. So they're in black and white because that's my printer and, and that's just, just that explanation. So hopefully you can see these. This is the Asa Asse sweater um, by Hana Rimmen. And it was a, has it's in a bunch of languages. So I'm, I'm guessing it's originally in Danish or Swedish, but it's something like that. It's a colorwork sweater. Uh, it calls for lace and fingering. We'll see a couple different versions. Um, or a DK and a gauge of 23 stitches in four inches. So the primary feature to me is color work. As you can see, this is all color work. Um, and I would recommend, a, there's a couple of options. One, if you wanted to go with fingering and lace weight, I think you could actually use Jameson's, um, Jameson Smith two ply jumper weight or Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift, which are two different yarns um, from different companies and hold it with a Biche Bouche uh, Le Petit Mohair, a silk. Um, or Rama Plum. They're very similar. They're both mohair blends that you can hold a lace weight with a fingering weight and end up with a somewhere in the gauge range of, of that DK. Other than that, I think it would be great in Rama Strickagarn. In Strickagarn, you will see, so each of those individual stitches, especially that are forming those, I'm sorry if that's blurry. Woo. Anyway. That will be a crisper pattern. It won't seem as like smooth and, and, and even. You'll see the individual stitches a bit more, but I think it would work really well. The other is Retrosaria Brusca. If you use Brusca, it's, it's a little bit airier of a yarn. It knits to a similar gauge as Stricken Garn, um, but you would get that more sort of even smooth fabric and not see the individual stitches quite as much. So that's what I would do for that. The second is the, and I look, I learned, I made it bigger, the Akina cardigan. So see, it's, it's a cardigan and all it has is some texture along this band edge here. Well, really the front, front panel, it's wider than a button band, but it's sort of that front panel. Um, so that's, it calls for a fingering weight, 26 stitches and four inches. Primary feature for me is it's just this texture here. It's, it's stockinette otherwise. So there's a textured bit here. So because of that, and the sort of desire for this, for me, 
is this I would love for this to feel very very wooly um, I recommended Tuku Will Fingering or Scottish Yarn Festival 4 ply I think those are both really nice they come in some heathered colors or some solid colors and you they would be able to see that stitch definition in the um, textured pieces pretty well without taking away from the nice wooliness of the of the rest of the sweater so again that's the Akina cardigan um, oh sorry by Aceta Krebs I didn't mention that and these are all available on Ravelry so welcome to go check these out and as far as I know which things change a lot at the Wooly Thistle there may be a um, there may have been changes, but as far as I know, there are no kits for these on the website, um, which is why I wanted to talk to about talk to talk about them and highlight them as some some other options that are not kits, but still to give you those yarn recommendations. Hope that makes sense. Here is the book club cardigan by Sari Nordland. It actually calls for a lace weight held with a sport weight or a worsted weight, um, but the gauge is 18 stitches um, in moss stitch. So. It's, it's a lot of cabling, but there is moss stitch like right along this button band here. Um, so that's what she has you do your gauge swatch in. Uh, for this, I would recommend uh, the Marie Wallen's British Breeds Erin. The, the new, actually, new to the shop, Briggs & Little Regal 2-ply is a wooly, round, um, sturdy w um, yarn from Canada. <laughs> so they're using a lot of... of, of yarn or ugh, sheep breeds sorry that are popular in Canada so something like um, Dorset, Suffolk, uh, Rideau, Arcot those will all be in that in that blend um, so those I think would both really work well in this kind of classic cardigan with with all these sort of cables and moss stitch and then if you did want to go with the the pairing of of a sport weight and a and a lace weight again Biche Bouche or Rauma, both have a lace weight mohair, so you could use either of those. And I would actually pair it with Rauma Fennel Guard in this case. It's just a bit thicker than um, most fingering weight yarns, and I think it would work well to get to this um, pattern gauge. Because if you think about it, the, the Fennel Guard by itself is used to knit a 20 stitch gauge for the vanilla sweater, or, a, or a, I think it's a 19 stitch gauge for the vanilla fluff. So 18 stitches is totally achievable and you'd want it to be lighter and not as dense in when you're doing this much texture. So again, Book Club Cardigan by Sari Nordland. This one, see, I'm very, I'm very proud of myself for being organized. I'm, this is as organized as I've been for a while, I think. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it. This is called the Calm Down Cardigan. It is pretty much stockinette. It's by Lily Kate France. You can see some other pictures over here, different angles of it. It's a V-neck, fairly simple cardigan, but it does have these kind of ridges. I think it's probably just knit and pearl along that drop shoulder line. And it, it calls for a DK weight. So it's a pretty classic cardigan. Um, would be a reasonably fast knit. It's at 22 stitches, so it's not the loosest gauge, but it's a, a fairly loose gauge. And it's all, it's all stock net except for those details. So you're not dealing with cables, you're not dealing with color work. So if you're looking for something uh, more manageable, this might be a good option. Uh, I would recommend Strickagarn if you're looking for especially some more structure. It'll give you a little bit of a stiffer fabric and more definition in these little ridges here. Um, or actually John Arbin Appledore DK I think would be really nice. Um, it has some really good heathered colors that would shine in this kind of stockinette um, garment. And uh, it would give you a little more drape because it's worsted spun and it, the sheep breeds that are in, included in it are a little bit, there's some more long wools and some other things that have some more drape. So that's the Calm Down Cardigan. The next is, I'm going, eh, they're just in alphabetical order. I thought I was going in a better order than that. This is called the Dew Sweater, D-E-W, Dew, like on a piece of grass. Um, by Hiromi Nagasawa. So it is a, a, a fairly loose fitting, if you can see it in a bigger picture, a fairly loose fitting pullover that has this cool texture. There's like some textured stitches, there's a cable just on the top of the shoulder. So if you're looking something with a little more interest than a, ba than a totally basic sweater, but isn't committing to all over cables, isn't committing to all over texture, it's a nice classic thing where you're just adding a little bit of something without 
overwhelming the sweater um, if that's something you're concerned about. It calls for sport weight, but at a slightly looser gauge of 21 stitches. I would actually love doing this in Retrosaria Vovo. Um, it's a rounder, smoother yarn, so you'll get that definition in these textures here, but I think it would also look really nice in the big stockinette area. Um, the other is Old Centrum 2-ply, so the 2-ply, not the 3-ply. Um, we carry both on the website. The 2-ply is closer to a sport weight, but it's a really puffy, um, woolly sport weight, so it's actually recommended to be knit at 20 stitches, um, which I have found to be a pretty nice fabric. It will be a little lighter, it will be a little drapier, um, but it would be really nice in this pattern. So the Dew Sweater. The next is the Leith Cardigan. You may have seen this. Um, Rebecca Klo also does, uh, she has a YouTube channel. She discusses all her designs. I think she was a YouTuber, YouTuber before she was designing knitwear actually, but a lot of her patterns are very popular. Um, I like this one in particular. I like these big bold stripes. It's also sort of color blocked. Like I don't know if you can see in the black and white, but like these stripes are a different color than those stripes. So you can do that any way you want. You can do it different colors. You can do it all one set of striped colors. You can do it solid. Um, she's actually knit one that was just two different textures. I think it was a boucle and a smooth. Um, so it's really cool. And the way that she does these stripes, if they, I wonder if there's a picture of the back in here. Oh, see, there's a sil there's this more solid one. Where's the back? There's a picture of the back. It is uh, intarsia. So on the back of the back, you're doing intarsia, but it's a completely straight line down the back. So you're not dealing with angles, you're not dealing with curves, you're not trying to make a picture or something. So it's a really nice introduction to intarsia um, if that's something you've been wanting to try. And because it's intarsia, you can make all the stripes different colors. You can make them different colors on either side of the sweater. I think you can see here that the two sides are different on the stripes. Um, I just think it's a cool, it's a cool design. And for this, I would, this, the, it calls for a worsted weight at 20 stitches. Um, I would actually recommend Ralva, Ralma Fivel or Fivel. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's their sort of weight between Strickagarn and Vams. It's like a lighter weight version of Vams. Um, so I think that would be a great option. Something slightly heavier would be Peace Fleece. I love Peace Fleece. You'll never tell me not to love Peace Fleece. I love it so much. But it'll be a little bit heavier at this gauge. Um, it's, it's a little happier more at like 18 stitches, so it'll be a little tighter here, but it, you could really make a nice sort of overcoat style cardigan, not like a drapey indoor cardigan, but like a true coat cardigan um, using piece fleece in this pattern. The next one, and hold on to your hats for this one. Oh my goodness. This is the modern mud cloth sweater uh, by Chinua Chin Matthews. Um, it's a sport weight at 24 stitches in color work. Um, it's based on um, African mud cloth textiles, but it's it's color work knitting. Um, but I just think it's phenomenal. Like it's so it's so different in my mind by a lot of color work. Mo a lot of color work, no fault of anybody's, tends to have sort of a horizontal aspect to it, whether it's a yoke going this way or um, fair isle color work tends to go, because you're knitting back and forth, it tends to go in lines like that. Um, he has intentionally made this sweater where the, the lines are more prominent vertically. And I think it's just fantastic. Holy moly, look at that. So if you're looking for an, a slightly less traditional, um, well, slightly less Western traditional color work knitting opportunity, this is just, I would love to do this. I don't have necessarily, it would take me about a year of the amount of knitting time I have these days, but um, I think it's just beautiful. I would actually recommend um, Finnelgarn would be great with this, with the color work, and also John Arbin Yarn Adelic. I find those two you can use, um, not interchangeably, because they're different yarns, different constructions, different types of spinning, um, but they are similar enough that you could use either. Finnelgarn is more that traditional Norwegian wool, and Yarnadelic is more of the, um, it's a softler, I think it's Falkland Corydale uh, wool. I, I often recommend it when people ask me, what's the softest yarn that you carry? What is the softest fingering weight? Like what's the softest sport weight? That's often what I go to. So modern mud cloth sweater. This one is the, and I didn't print it big, I guess not. This is called the Oleander um, by Audrey Borrego or Borrego. 
trying to get it to focus. I hope that focused enough. It's an all over lace pattern, but it's a fairly closed lace. So you're not like thinking it's going to be meshy or anything like that. Um, that also then has sort of bands of, you know, the ribbing for the neckline and the, and the cuffs and everything else. It calls for a 25, a sport weight and 20, 25 stitches in the lace pattern. Uh, I would recommend something that's fairly new to our shop, uh, Mountain Metal Wool Cody. It'll give you some pretty nice crisp definition while being very soft for, for this kind of sweater. Um, and if you are thinking you don't want that sort of really crisp lace, I'd, I think it's great, but maybe you want something a little bit fuzzier, a little more halo. Um, you could use, also use Jagger Spun Gotland or even uh, Jameson and Smith 5 Ply Shetland, sort of their more um, Guernsey style, Gansey style yarn. Would It's round enough to give you this I'll put that down. Give you the the stitch definition um, that, but it's woollier than than say the the Cody. If you're looking for like traditional hard wearing wool, this is the Stepping Stones cardigan. It's not dissimilar to the other one, the um, Akina cardigan that has that panel of texture. This is a panel of lace, and it's a bit of a longer cardigan, more of a tunic cardigan. Um, it calls for DK at 21 stitches, so it's a little bit of a um, larger stitch than some of these other patterns. And I would recommend the Scottish Yarn Festival DK or Tukul DK for the similar reasons as that other pattern. I was recommending the fingering rate weight, the fingering weight versions of the same two yarns because it has that nice wooliness for the rest of the sweater, but then the um, nice definition for the texture in those in that front panel. So it's the Stepping Stones Cardigan by Rebecca McKenzie. And here we go, my very last one. Um, sorry, this has been so long, but I just, I got excited and I wanted to show a range of things with a range of weights. And so there's just some more ideas, some more inspiration. This is called the Terra Nova Sweater by Jennifer Beale. Jennifer Beale does some amazing work, both with color work and with lace and with cables and comes up with really interesting constructions. This isn't even close to the most creative construction that she has in a sweater. This is color work, Fair Isle style color work here. And then if you can see this picture, lace panel down the sleeves. So I don't know if you can tell very well, but right here, the lace panel is on the outside and the color works on the inside. So um, I don't know how it's done actually, but I would love, love, love to make this um, this pattern. But the original colorway is beautiful and she does a really great job putting all the colors together. It comes, um, it is recommended, it is, the pattern is knit originally, I think, in Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift, um, but easily interchangeable with uh, Jameson and Smith two-ply jumper weight. So you have a lot of color options. Um, it is a 28 stitch gauge in the color work. So it's pretty, it'll take a while. It'll take some time to do, um, but it's a real showstopper. I really, and there's a panel down under the arms. I actually don't know if this is steaked or worked in the round with steaked steaks and then the lace is worked flat. So she has a whole description in the, on the Ravelry page of the construction. So if you have questions about that, about how it, how it's done and if that's something that's interesting to you, that's on her Ravelry page. Um, but this is the Terra Nova by Jennifer Beale. So that's it. That's what I've got. I just wanted to um, jump in and show you some, some additional options. I know that it's really nice when kits are made up for you, but we are absolutely here for any pattern that you are interested in knitting. If you're stumped on colors, on yarns to use, on can I handle this? Like I'm, you know, it's my first sweater or it's my 50th sweater. Like um, reach out to us with any questions. And I, I love doing what I just did for all of you, where it's, you know, finding patterns, finding yarns, matching the two together, um, and getting a lot of cool projects in motion. So thanks for listening. Um, hopefully you found something that inspires you, and I will see you next time. Bye. Right, well, welcome back, and thank you, Kelsey. Love your segment, and I'm sure everybody will have found something, some little nugget in there that will be very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, what's up next, Maggie? Um, um, next is for the cow. So what are you knitting for the cow? Oh, okay. So um, I am going to be knitting 
the Agnes sweater by Christian Wiola. And I have marveled at this for a long time. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. All over color work. I have that pattern too. Do you? Yeah, I couldn't resist. It reminds me of what you knitted one year in the book, but we don't have that book anymore. And I'm looking to see if I can source it from somewhere, but it's not, it's currently not easy. Um, yeah. The, the sweater, it was called Scandinavian Sweaters. Mm, um, by Trafalga. Yeah. Kristen Wheela Odegaard. Um, she does have a website and she has a new book that's like sweaters, sweater knit yeah. knitting over a year. Yes. And it's in English. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I got this in the end. But do you remember um, at Rhinebeck last year? I was sort of shouting at people. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what are you wearing? Yeah. And there was a lovely lady. I, I have the picture. Let's put it here. I don't know her name, but this is what she was wearing. And it sort of stuck in my mind. And I think the sweater cowl yeah. is that time for me to knit this. Yeah. So oh, um, those are great colors. We're out of stock of this one right now. So I have to talk to Seth and see <laughs> if it's coming back in. But these will be my colors. It's in Rama Fennel Garden. My very so happy will this yarn. be your main color? This like will be the, the main bottom? color. Yes. And I've got a, I think this might be a substitute that I need to play with a little bit, or maybe it's called for, I can't remember. This one is a sub. So some of her um, yarns that she calls for are alpaca, yeah. and I'm, I'm going to do it all in Rama Fennel Garn, but I think that would look quite good. Mm -hmm. I love that pink. Mm. Um, and the green, there's green in it, which I think is such an interesting pop of colour. You can see it here. Yeah. I love it. So I'm looking forward to knitting this. It'll be in the round. It's a cardigan, so it'll be sticked up. It's got a yoked sweater. It's top down, so you'll do the yoke first, which is all the exciting fun parts. But I actually really enjoy knitting. So it's top down? Yeah. Wow, okay. It's a yoke. Because the one that I did with her from the Scandinavian was sweaters yours, was bottom up. But it was fitted sleeves, wasn't it? How, what kind of sleeve? You did like the body and then you did the sleeves and then you joined it all. But it wasn't like you would with a lopey sweater. But it wasn't a yoke sweater, was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So this one's top down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have nice. no preference. I love to knit my socks top down. But sweaters, I'm quite happy either way. And when I'm, I don't know, sometimes I prefer to design a sweater bottom up like I'm doing with the, the, uh, yeah the vest because decreasing in pattern is sometimes easier than trying to add stitches. Yeah. Just I've depends. done both now. I know initially when I started sweater knitting, I, I had a real preference for raglans and yeah. top down because yeah. it's easier. It felt easier to get good fit. Mm -hmm. um, but after doing the first couple um, bottom up, it's really not a big It's deal. really not. It's really yeah. not. I think too, if you're going to be sticking, you can't try the thing on anyway. <laughs> right. You know, you're kind of, you're all squeezed in. So that's what I'm doing. Now, Especially if you're seeking armholes and, um, and if you're just neat seeking a button band, you can put it on. Right. But but if you're doing armholes or an end or a neck, yeah. you're now not trying it on. So I don't, th actually, I don't think that, I'm guessing that does not have steaked armholes. I think you're just doing yeah. the thing and then you'll knit down. Yeah. But you will be sticking right down the front. I don't care. I'm going to yeah. wear it at Rhinebeck. Hopefully that's the goal. Okay. Yeah. Great. We're going to Rhinebeck. We are going around. Yeah, I hope you are too. We'll have, but... a, we'll have a nice little group. It'll yeah. be lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we see you there, say hello. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what you're knitting for the sweater cow. Yes, what are you? Ooh, I got itchy nose. Um, for the sweater cow, I'm sorry if you've already seen this before, I am knitting from this book, which is, which is the beautiful. My Fair Isle Journey book. Um, and this is back in stock here in the shop. It's filled with um, just some real gorgeous Fair Isle knits. Um, mm. I think it's actually really fun that the book is in English and in Japanese. Well, it is Emma Risu. Yeah, I know. But I like that. Usually they'll do like an English version and then they'll right. translate it, but it's all in one here and I actually find that really fun. There's a bit of history about um, Fair Isle, the island, and then a bunch of designs. Um, all really beautiful. Ooh, cool. I know, isn't that a really nice vest? Mm. I love the bag bags. too. Yeah. So there's this. Fun! That's not what I'm knitting. Um, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, I love this vest. Love it. 
Oh yeah. Absolutely love it. Um, but that's not what I'm knitting. I am knitting the NOS sweater, which is this wow, one. Wow, Maggie, that I is a, that's like an opus, magnum opus. I know. Thing. It's wild. That is. Um, I picked I like this one also because it's one motif that repeats mm -hmm. as opposed to multiple motifs. Yeah. So you will So I figured this was a good one to start with. Eventually I will figure out the pattern and I'll just be able to just go. It's very go. pretty. Um, Are you doing these colors? I'm doing similar colors. When you read um, her colors, I think that that's actually like a dark blue, but it uh, looks very black. 81 to me. Yeah. Oh, um, 81. It looked very 81, 81. alert. <laughs> I know. JNS 81. So I've ripped it from my ball. Um, so I've been swatching. This swatch was um, because I have the Cruden going. I know what gauge I'm getting. Yeah. Um, wonderful. And it's very similar to this pattern. I am not down another needle size because I can't knit a whole sweater on size one so that would just kill me oh my god um but anyway so what are you doing so, twos so yeah I think right now it is on twos it just wow. it's crazy it's um, gorgeous though let's yeah. let, hold it up so um it's color 81 and then I have the colors written on my Ravelry page I've already got my Ravelry page going for it and then the pink and the light blue are actually fennel garn because I had them in stash oh. um there are comparable JNS colors yeah but since I already had a little bit in stash yeah. I just rounded out what I had oh fun. I don't care that it's different dye lots because it's color work yeah it doesn't matter yeah um but I love this it Absolutely is beautiful. It. Oh. That little pop of hot pink in the middle makes me so happy. Yeah. It is gorgeous, Maggie. And so. 81. I know. I finally get to use my cone of 81. Yeah. Awesome. So, so. you're knitting from stash. I am knitting well done mostly you. from stash. I had to do a little bit of my knitter math, which required some addition in order to get the subtraction from my stash. I love that. It all that. counts. Um, yeah. So, because, yeah, I mean, I had the cone and I, I had all of the colors. But I needed like three more balls of like this one and two more of this one yeah. and one more of that one. So yeah. not so bad. Not um, so bad. And just really, really, I really love the colors. It's absolutely so gorgeous. I think it'll be wonderful. Yes, it I will. I want it to have a nice loose sweatshirty feel. Yeah. So beautiful. That'll oh be my great. goodness. So inspiring. So now of course you don't need to knit color work to be knitting no. the sweater. That's just your choice and mine as it turns out. Yeah. But you could knit any sweater from the vanilla to, you know, something uh, very lacy or cable-y. Yes. Or whatever. It can be in bulky weight yarn, yeah. iron weight yarn. It does not have to be this. And I think we um, said three quarter length sleeves. Yeah. At a minimum. Yeah. To count. So that is what I will be knitting. Um, I might try <coughs> to finish Cruden before I cast this on. I might. We'll see. Um, um especially since I think I need the needles from Cruden <laughs> to cast this one on. And really, like I've been making, like now it really has my I've been very undivided attention, but distracted. But yeah, now it has my attention, and I'm yeah. going through it faster. That's funny because I, I, you know, we're both trying to get uh, vests done. I am. Tr I would love to get that vest all figured out math wise, because then I can start plugging in the grading mm -hmm. numbers for yeah. other sizes, and right. get that out to you hopefully. So okay, so um, the sweater cal does start today. So happy cast on day. Yes, and we have a nice long weekend. Yes, to knit, lots of knitting. Knit through. It's autumn, supposedly. It's starting well, to feel. It's getting, it's getting close. I'm I, one of these people who I'm not quite ready. Like the solstice is the 21st of September, people. <laughs> um, but, but having been away and coming back, I did notice yellower leaves. It is, it is definitely like as I, I try to go for a daily walk, um, like around lunchtime. Mm. Um, and it is definitely shifted to late summer. Like you can tell mm. there's, it's just things look It's different. good sleeping weather too. Like Excellent windows open and... Weather. Oh, yeah, I love that. I do um, love that. Although my allergies have kicked into high cue, oh, but whatever. Um, I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's fine. Yeah, it, could be it worse. sucks, It though. could be 90 degrees. It could so be. It's fine. It could be. Um, I am one of those people who is really looking forward to the fall and all that crisp weather. And my I'm daughter's just, I already... I rush it. Like no. I'm seeing pumpkin spice, yes. everything. Yes, my daughter's very excited about ready. that. But I don't think it's rushing; it's making it longer. I mean, you don't want to rush the end of summer. <laughs> but I feel like too, where we're <laughs> the minute it's warm, we jump into summer, and it's yeah. still spring. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, you you live so your I'm life your do way. What I'm doing, and if you're all pumpkin spice happy, enjoy. Uh, I am just happy that wool doesn't feel doesn't feel yeah. sweaty anymore. Mm -hmm. That makes me happy for yeah. sure. But uh, yeah, it's a long weekend. Do you have any plans? 
Um, no, so Other than we, knitting? we are in the process of saying goodbye to our big people as they head back off to school. Aww. So we dropped off Sam on Saturday. Aww. So there's one less person in the house. Um, and Jilly goes back on Monday on Labor Day. So oh, wow. we will be, we, I will be trying to eke out every moment with yeah. Jilly that I can before she heads back. Yeah. And, and then Irene's going into what grade? Irene starts high school. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah, freshman year. Oh so by now gosh. she will have started because they start on Thursday. That's right. That's Which right. Is wild. I my, know. My youngest kid is now a high schooler. Yeah, and it'll it'll zoom by. Yeah, my son is going into his what would you call his second year sophomore? Sophomore. He's he's a sophomore. He's been doing soccer a lot and. Um, yeah, he passed his driving test and is driving himself to school and nice. soccer. And all of a sudden, I'm just surplus to requirement, mm -hmm. which is very nice because it's more knitting time. Although I always found knitting time waving and watching different things. Now I feel like I'm not welcome at, you know, <laughs> at, 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 not football, soccer games and things like that. Although, of course, I am welcome, but just not needed as much. I don't ask if I'm welcome. I just show I you know. these things. I know. Sometimes I ask and I get out. No. <laughs> <laughs> like well you know if you don't see me i'll be watching you from a distance yeah. but anyway yeah he loves his soccer he's got a job um on the weekends too nice. and yeah he's really doing great and maya is starting college uh she's going to be uh going to her local community college and uh, figuring out what she wants to do and i'm really excited for that nice yeah so yeah the kids family all that's good and yes, that um, feels very fall all the back to school stuff yes it's happening although i'm sure many of you <coughs> uh, um, are already with kids back to school because i know a lot of places go back mm -hmm. early august which feels cray cray to me but anyway back to the cow back to what <laughs> we're supposed to be talking about um prizes maggie we've got a first Prize, first place prize of a hundred dollar gift card to the Wooly Thistle. Come and spend till your heart's content. Um, the second prize is the Wooly Thistle Nibbler Box. Have we talked about the Nibbler Box? Um, we had a segment that Jill and I record about recorded about the Nibbler Box, but I actually think that it might not have been included in the last shopcast. Right, because I think it's just it, launching. It, yeah, because it just launched, um, and it is available in the shop now, and it just launched last week. Maybe maybe we should put this the segment that you recorded in here. So we'll, we'll do that after the third prize, which is the Wooly Thistle Fan Pack, where you get one skein of Rambler, a small TWT tote, three stickers, and Thistle Stitch Marker set. So those are the prizes for completing your sweater um, and following whatever rules we have, which are all available on the cow page in the Shopcast. But suffice to say, if you're not... If you don't care about the prices and you just want another long and you want to do something that's short sleeve, do it. Knit with us. We'd love to see you there. Um, mm -hmm. Very happy to be knitting with you and enjoying our knitting together. So, yes, I think, too, um, having a long weekend, because I had the kids for so long in Greece, um, John will be with the kids over the long weekend, which means I get to knit a lot and not have to be anywhere or do anything. Nice. Yes. Goodness me, what's all this? Oh my goodness, we yes. got a lot We've had of a donations. Lot of prize donations for the shop cast. So I'm going to run through these real fast. These are more prizes, but from designers. So Marie Wallen is offering a Beth. Uh, is it Betha or Betha? Anyway, I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm going to say Betha, which is probably the wrong thing. So I'm going to say Betha <laughs> sweater kit in the winner's choice. So that is a whole Marie Wallen sweater kit as a prize. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marie. Mm -hmm. Tuku Wool is offering four skeins of Tuku Wool fingering yarn. Thank you, Tuku. Jagger spun one yarn bundle to each of three winners containing six 50 gram skeins of Heather Sport uh, slash DK white yarn. That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Simply Shetland, one hat by Gudrun Johnson. Winner's choice of Melby Huckster, Shetland Solstice or Callister kit with muslin bag. That's a hat kit. Thank you. Uh, Noma Nidlova. Noma. I'll put it here. Yep. Noma <laughs> Nidlova. Uh, two Monday to Friday sock ebook downloads and five pattern downloads. Thank you. And Donna Smith, two Langsund ebooks downloads. Thank you, Donna. That's wonderful. And then pattern, pattern downloads from Kay Hopkins. She's offering six patterns. Thea Coleman, two patterns each to three winners. Susan Mills, five pattern downloads. Isabel Kramer, five pattern downloads. Kim Paquette, five pattern downloads. Alicia Plummer, five pattern downloads. Wee Chen, who is the petite knitter, five pattern downloads. Elizabeth Doherty, which is Bluebee Studios, three pattern downloads. Miju KP, uh, three pattern downloads. Jessica McDonald, who is Jessica M. Knits, uh, three pattern downloads. Carolyn Holbrook, 
who has Willie Needle, three pattern downloads, Mona Zilla uh, of Bunny Muff, three pattern downloads, and Gudrun Johnston, one sweater pattern download. Thank you, everybody. And I think Caitlin's working hard to put all these together. So there might be more coming, but I think that is really lovely support mm -hmm. for the Cal. So thank you designers for um, offering up these wonderful prizes. Remember when you're knitting at any time and you're posting on Instagram or elsewhere, use the hashtag take your knitting so that uh, we can see your woolly thistle knitting out there in the world. Should we now go to Emma and see her segment where yeah. she's going to give us a demonstration of that thing that confused me no end for a long time? Yep, and she'll also show us some of her favorite Briggs and Little knits. Oh, fabulous. Okay, so we'll see you on the other side. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Shopcast this week. Uh, I'm Emma. If we haven't met, I live in Baltimore, Maryland, um, although I'm originally from Vermont, so much closer to uh, the Woolly Thistle. Um, <laughs> and I come to you once a month to talk all things Woolly Wool. So... The thing I want to talk about this week, you've probably heard people talking about it throughout like the last couple years on the Shopcast. Um, and I think someone was talking about it kind of recently. Um, but I am really obsessed with needle felted steaks. So if you don't know what steaking is, welcome. We talk about it a lot. It's when you cut your knitting with scissors, <laughs> which sounds really scary for a lot of people who've never done that before. You're like, you, you what? Um, but, um, you know, I'm sure, yeah, some of you have like gasped audibly at Kareen saying she didn't reinforce her steaks and nothing happened. Um, but wool uh, does not like to unravel, at least not sticky wool or, you know, woolly wool as we would call it. Um, wool doesn't like to unravel this way. It likes to unravel, or excuse me, it likes to unravel this way and not this way. Um, so it'll ladder, especially you'll notice with superwash, um, if you drop a stitch, what happens is that you get a ladder this way. You don't get a ladder this way. Wool doesn't want to unravel horizontally. Um, and that probably has something to do with physics. Um, and I am not a physicist. So I don't actually understand how, how that, you know, why that works that way. Maybe someone knows, like maybe someone watching knows exactly why and can tell us in a comment and like, thank you if you can. That's really interesting. Um, but like, all I need to know is it doesn't unravel this way. Um, Although reinforcing a steak, so um, basically stopping that steak, the yarn in that steak that you cut from unraveling any which way, um, does help a lot of people feel better about steaking. So um, you can do it in a few different ways. A really common way to reinforce a steak for a lot of people is to use a sewing machine. Um, and I don't have a sewing machine, so I can't tell you um, exactly how to do that, but there are a lot of online tutorials. Um, my mom has used a sewing machine to um, reinforce her steaks. Um, a lot of people favor a crochet steak reinforcement. Um, so you make a crochet chain on either side of where you're going to cut to keep that yarn from unraveling almost in like a duplicate stitch kind of way, but you're using your crochet hook and slightly different um, things. I am not great with a crochet hook, so I've never done a crochet reinforced steak. Um, but a few years ago, I learned from the folks at Modern Daily Knitting who had a newsletter about this. They are um, a different, um, you know, they, they, they're they like a, a yarn a knitting kind of hub. <laughs> I don't know if they have a store anymore, but um, they it's they're knowledgeable and they, they put out newsletters that have interesting, um, you know, like facts about yarn and like helpful tips. And I found this really helpful. Um, to use a needle felting tool, I have one here, to reinforce a steak because if you needle felt something, a needle felting tool is, this only has two needles because one of them fell off, also they're twisted, or they're, excuse me, bent because I um, am not careful with my belongings. <laughs> Um, I don't know what happened. I probably like didn't put the cap on and the, the, the needles get bent on these really easily. This is from, I think it's made by Clover. Um, and they come with three, but you can get, if you just Google needle felting tool, um, you can get a lot of different types. Um, yeah, I think you can see that. So it has these little barbs on it. And what the barbs do is when you go like this into the material, the wool, um, it pushes and pulls the, um, you know, if it's non superwash and the, the fibers are able to jumble, um, especially if it's like wool and spun, it tends to work even better. Um, the fibers will stick together 
like it will like this locks the fibers together essentially um so it's not like bulletproof but when it comes to needle felting a steak in um woolly non or non superwash wool i've never tried it on like not super woolly non superwash wool but i imagine it would probably work i have used um well i have used like a a less woolly so one time i made a sweater with um arm skip manor dk yarn as the body of the card it was a cardigan because i steaked it up. it was my first steak ever um it was our arm skip manor cardigan um i got the yarn from the woolly thistle and i used like a non just kind of like a commercially available like not super um woolly not super wash wool i might have even gotten it wholesale because i like to dye yarn i just had this around and um i used it in the yoke as like with the gray arm skip manor yarn which was really nice and um I steaked that with a needle felting tool and it never unraveled. So I think you can use it with any, this, this technique with any non superwash yarn. Um, sorry, that was a lot of information. Um, but moral of the story, you can probably use the needle felting tool to steak um, pretty much anything with non superwash. So I am actually at a point where I need to do this. And so I'm going to do a little demo so you can see. So this is a sweater that I've been working on um, for um, the last few months. I like to make a Fair Isle sweater every year for Rhinebeck. Um, and as just because I love Fair Isle knitting and it gives me an ex excuse, I guess, not that I need one, to like knit a full Fair Isle sweater every year. Um, so this is knitted. Uh, it's a design that I made up. Please don't ask me for the pattern. Um, my, I actually did put the charts that I made in a chart keeper on Ravelry. So, um, if you look me up on Ravelry, I'm eBarnaby93. Um, you can see the charts that I used, but I don't have, I mean, I'll put like some basic notes in there about what I did, but um, I, I mostly do these freehand. I don't use um, patterns, but I can also direct you to some patterns um, through, I'll do it through that page, through my Ravelry page, where I give you some um, some links to patterns that are like the same type of, of you know, garment, um, that, you know, you can put your own charts into basically if you want. That's what I do. So, um, I am making this one a v-neck. And so I, I am like, I had to improvise that. Um, I've done a v-neck sweaters before in, um, Fair Isle. So I know kind of what I'm doing. Um, but so basically I'm going to needle felt all the steaks. So I've got a v-neck steak and I have this arm size steak. It's really messy because this is where I change colors because you actually don't have to weave in the ends if there's a steak and your ends are like within the steak. You can just trim them. Um, and then there's this arm size steak, which um, does not have floats. Or excuse me, does not have ends. <laughs> floats. It does have floats. Um, I always purl the first and last stitches of my steak just so I know that where exactly to pick up my stitches in a straight line on the outside of the steak. Um, so that helps me. Um, you can purl the whole steak if you want. Um, sometimes if you're doing a piece in just one color, um, but there's a steak like in the victory cardigan, you could purl the whole steak except the middle stitch and then you know exactly where to cut, which is cool because you want to try and cut as close to the center of the steak as you can. But I have one more piece of advice here for you, um, which is I do not close my shoulders. So I'm going to graft this shoulders of this together like here and here, I'm going to close this. I'm going to keep my back neck stitches on hold um, to then, because I'm going to knit the neckband. Um, I'm going to pick up along this steak, the V-neck steak, and then I'm going to put those held stitches back on the needles to knit the neckband, but I'm going to graft the shoulders together. But before I do that, I'm going to needle felt the steaks because it's really hard sometimes to get your needle felting mat into um, the like little nooks and crannies when these are closed, when the shoulders are closed. So I have two needle felting mats. This is a smaller one um, that I actually prefer to use. It's clearly been used because there's, this is like, uh, this tells me that I used it to needle felt something recently. Um, oh, it was the Guernsey that I made with frangipani. That navy cone up there is frangipani. And I, I made a Guernsey and I need needle felted the, I did steaks for the arm size and the neck and I needle felted them to keep them secure. So I could keep working in the round, which was really nice. Then I have a bigger one. This just, oops, there's a piece of fiber on it. Um, this is just, I don't know who makes it, probably got it online. Um, so you need a mat because, or something in which to drill this into because you're gonna wreck 
You can't do that on a hard, you can't do it on a hard surface. It, it needs, this needs to be able to sink into something. Um, so yeah, a, a, a wool mat or a foam, a dense foam mat is what you need. Um, and don't try to use your yoga mat. I don't think that would work. Although if someone's ever used a yoga mat to seek, let me know. Cause that sounds funny. Um, so I'm going to use this one and I'm going to point my camera down. Um, and I'm going to show you how I do this. If you've never seen it before, there's the bridge. I'm going to put this inside. So I have the mat on the inside here. You can see that. And I use my tool and I am just going to stab and stab and stab. This is really good if you're like a slightly aggressive person, but you don't want to like yell at somebody like there was really bad traffic on my commute today and I'm really mad and I have all this aggression in my body, but like, I don't want to take it out on somebody. Um, it's a really good technique to get rid of some of it. Um, so yeah, you just, you don't need to, you don't need to do this for an hour. You need to just like, I like to try and stab as much of the surface area as possible, but like stabbing one of these, you know, whole things should take me from two to five minutes. Um, so yeah, not super tricky. Um, it does look kind of fuzzy on the underside. You can see it's a little, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little fuzzier here than it is up here. It means it's working. Um, but on not, uh, less woolly wools, it doesn't always feel fuzzy. So um, that's okay. It's still probably secure. I just assume because I can't really tell. But again, I've never had any of these unravel. So of course I've, I've done a, I've done a Kareen before too, and like not reinforced my steaks on arm size before, because I've just been like on vacation and finished something. And I'm like, I don't have time. I need to start the sleeves. And so I just cut, <laughs> but, um, which I, yeah, I have done that. Um, and nothing has ever unraveled, but it's a little scarier. The only other thing I'm going to say that I do here, um, is that, um, when I'm done and I've, okay. So when I'm done with this, I will graph the shoulders together and put those back next stitches on hold. I graphed my shoulders together using um, a three needle bind off on the inside. So there's a nice little, it looks like a sewn seam here, um, which is nice. The next thing is that I block it because I want those stitches to really settle. Um, I want the, I want, yeah, I want them to feel like they're, um, yeah, they're just kind of settled uh, into like where they want to be because um, blocking really helps well with that. Um, and then I will pick up the stitches so along the v-neck and along the arm size or the basically the holes where I'm gonna knit the sleeves down this way I'm gonna pick up all those stitches before I cut the steaks open so I always do the neck first if I have a neck steak whether that's a crew neck or um, a v-neck um, so that I can actually put be able to put it over my head and I knit the neckband and then I do one sleeve um, I pick it up magic loop style and then I usually switch to a 16 inch circular um, and then eventually I have to switch back to either magic loop or um, a smaller circular. Like I have the Chiaogu minis, um, the like, or the sh really shorties, I guess. I have the mini and the, and the, like the red and the blue sets of those. So sometimes I switch to that um, or I just switch to magic loop depending on, on my preference. I prefer the Chiaogu shorties. This is personal preference. I prefer the bigger needles on the Chiaogu shorties. Like, I don't know why the, the smaller needles, uh, just so they, they feel really flimsy in my hands and I don't personally like love that. So you got to experiment with what's right for you. Um, if you like magic loop, if you like DPNs, or if you like those little shorties for Fair Isle or any sleeves, um, and yeah, so I'll do the first, like I said, I'll do the first, I'll pick up the stitches for the first arm side, um, steak, and then I will usually cut that one open and then I will knit onto a circular needle and then I will pick up the stitches on magic loop needle on the other arm side and cut that open and just leave that on a barber cord or, um, or the magic loop needle and I'll knit one sleeve at a time, but that way I can actually try the sweater on. So the neck band is done. I work on one sleeve. I can try it on with both of my arms, at least through the sleeve holes, even if one is not knitted yet to see how long um, I want the sleeve to be. So that's what I do. Um, for anybody who wants to ever do this or like, you know, DIY a, a Fair Isle sweater. Um, again, I have some patterns that I used at first to learn how to do this, um, which I will link on my Ravelry page for this um, sweater, with all, which also will have the pictures of the charts in case you like them and you just want to use them. Um, I'm an open access person. Please use these charts on, you know, a hat or anything you want, Fair Isle scarf or a sweater yourself. Um, and, uh, 
yeah, so the only thing, other thing I want to briefly mention is one of my favorite yarns. And I heard a rumor from someone at the shop that this yarn might be coming to the Wooly Thistle. And it's one of my favorite yarns. Um, and it is Briggs and Little Regal. So Briggs and Little is a mill in New Brunswick, Canada, which is actually not that far from New Hampshire, where the Wooly Thistle is. And they, um, they have a lot of yarns and they are made with like really sturdy Canadian wool. It's a wool and spun mill. Um, Briggs and Little Regal is my very favorite yarn of Briggs and Little. Um, if you're familiar with Lichen and Lace yarn, their rustic sport yarn is the same base as Briggs and Little Sport. So it's like a single ply, but like kind of, um, you know, wooly wool, nice and toothy, um, like sport weight. Um, it has a really high yardage though. Like if you look at the yardage, you'd be like, that's fingering weight because it's a four ounce skein or 113 grams, but it's actually, um, it does knit up at a sport gauge. Um, Regal is 274 yards or yeah, 272 yards in uh, four ounces, which is 113 grams. Um, that's a pretty generous amount. It's wool and spun. Um, some uh, companies list this yarn as DK. I usually think of it as worsted um, because it does bloom really well when you uh, block it. I have knitted a lot of sweaters in Briggs and Little. Um, Regal especially is my favorite. Um, and it just like the sweaters last forever. Um, they're, they're pretty wooly, like, but a lot of people at the wooly who, um, shop with us at the wooly thistle, um, are okay with that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I love this yarn. Sorry, just snipping it because it smells like really wooly wool. So some people like to make like outerwear type of sweaters and you'll wear like a long sleeves underneath. It'll keep you super warm. Um, I usually knit Regal up at about 18 stitches over four inches to 20 stitches over four inches as my gauge. Um, and yeah, again, generous amounts. They ha come in beautiful heathered colors. You can't necessarily tell how beautiful the heathering is in this, although it is a heathered color. This is charcoal heather or no, it's called dark gray. Um, but, uh, they have these like the, you know, the non, the non, non black and white, <laughs> um, palette is stunning. They have so many beautiful flecks of color, like, um, almost, yeah, it's just, it's really stunning. I'm not sure what I would even compare it to because I don't think it's comparable to anything, but Briggs and Little make beautiful yarn and it is a really good, um, like economical yarn. It's not super, super expensive. It won't break the bank. So if you're looking for kind of a budget friendly sweater yarn, hat yarn, um, I think these are very famously made into mittens a lot in Nova Scotia and the like Atlantic provinces of Canada. Um, they have like books and stuff that they, that they've put out. Briggs and Little has published books, um, about mittens and stuff. Um, yeah, this is a great yarn. Um, and I really, really recommend trying it. Um, it's not as scratchy as you think. Although I think that's like the main lesson we've all learned from the Wooly Thistle. So, um, yeah, I hope everyone has a great start to their fall and really is getting excited or has probably already cast on for the sweater cowl. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm knitting yet, but I have some ideas. <laughs> I really want to knit like another, I'm like, I knit another Fair Isle sweater, but like realistically, these sleeves are going to take me a few weeks. So I don't know if I will be starting, be able to start a new um, big sweater by then, but we'll see. Maybe I'll just start another new sweater um, because I love to knit sweaters and we're getting closer to sweater season. Can you tell I'm excited for summer to be over? I'm so excited for summer to be over. So this was um, a little bit of a longer segment because I was showing you those needle felted steaks, but um, thank you so much for being here with us. Once again, we're so happy that you're shopping with the Wooly Thistle. Um, and yeah, just we love having you as part of this community. So thanks for being here and we'll see you next time. Bye. So the Nibbler box is a brand new offering from the Wooly Thistle that we have been working really hard on and we're super excited about it. Maggie, mm -hmm. what what do people need to know about the Nibbler box? Um, so I think the Nibbler box is especially the, the customer we had in mind for this is anybody who's new to non-super wash, woolly wools, yeah. and wants to get a little taste of it before they really embark upon a first big project. Yes. So this box was put together with that knitter in mind. Yes. And so there's... Or crochet. Yes, so there's a little bit of woolly wool in there. You get a sort of little sampling. So there will be other little lovelies in there too, not mm -hmm. just yarn. So yes, very interesting. I think you should check it out. Um, and so here is your clip from before. Yeah, so Jill and I sat down and recorded a little intro to the Nibbler box. And so we hope you enjoy. Yeah.
Available now in the shop too is a new box, um, the new box to TWT. We're calling it our Nibbler box. Nibbler. With a K. Nibbler with a K. Nibbler because, with a K. Um, because you just, it's so cute. Yeah. Um, and our Nibbler box is designed with um, new knitters in mind, new knitters to wooly wool. Um, mm -hmm. If you're finding us and you're just embarking upon your non-super wash journey, um, we have put this box together with you in mind. Mm -hmm. um, it, we've put it together, it's at an affordable price point. It's $99.95 with free shipping. Um, and it comes with um, pattern suggestions. And I think this is so cute. Yes. Oh um, my gosh. And it comes with a cute little wooden postcard. Yes. It's available in five colorways. You get to go to the shop and choose which colorway that you would like. Mm -hmm. It has a tote with a gold TWT logo on it, a small tote. Um, and then I love this. Um, then it comes with six skeins of yarn. You get two uh, balls of JNS in contrasting colors so that you can um, sample knitting that. Um, there's also a pattern suggestion card. So if you're looking for ideas of what do I do with the yarn, we've got ideas for you. So you've got two balls of JNS, two balls of Let Lopi. Um, so these are some of our best tried and true yarns and two balls of Rama Vams. And then you also get um, a small bottle of Eucalon to take care of your lovely woolens and a tuft hand balm in an assortment of, of um, I always want to say flavors, but you're I not going to eat this. You're going to use this on your hands. So it's a, a different sense. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And then you get two um, gold, I like these gold ones, gold yeah. stickers for the and belief as like well. Maggie said, one of the little wooden postcards that is actually mailable. Except I don't know that I want to want to send it to anybody. I, would just I know keep I just kind of want to keep on. Yeah, they're really collectible <laughs> and fun. Yep. Um. So I think that this our idea is that this is a really great way for you to sample yarns that you might not have tried yet. Um. Or if you're new to woolly wool, just kind of getting a feel for what it's like knitting with mm -hmm. non super wash wool and caring for it. Yep. And I think you um, you you will be really happily surprised. Because these yarns, like they feel really nice in the ball, but they're they're really textured. Let Lopi is kind of, um, let's say crunchy, but it's it's. Yeah, let yeah. let Lopi is it like its own thing. Icelandic yeah. fleece are really, are sheep are really unique and interesting, and they're dual coated and like they're just a really unique sheep mm -hmm. with that soft under coating and that hairy outer coating. Um, and it makes for a really unique and interesting yarn. It does, but the difference between in the ball and washed and blocked is like night and day yeah they're mm -hmm. yeah it's that's all i can say it's night and day difference yeah so, so if you're yeah. new to woolly wool um check out the new twt nibbler box mm -hmm. it's a fun introduction and you're not going to be sad you did it and this is just one of the colorways available there are five colorways mm -hmm. two that lean more warm one that's neutral and two that are cool mm -hmm. um, so yeah so those are available in the shop now. If if a colorway that you would like is out of stock, you can sign up for a back in stock because we will be restocking these. Absolutely. Well, I hope that you're all excited by the Nibbler box. They're in the shop now, Maggie, mm -hmm. is that right? So yes, um, we hope that you love this idea. And if you have friends who are new to knitting with woolly wool and still need that, you know, super merino washy softness, but they're getting curious, this would be a great box to um, point them in the direction of. Yeah. Should we announce another winner and then have a shop update? Yeah. Okay. I think that sounds great. Well, our second winner today of a $25 gift card is at Amy Falberg 4515. Amy says, another great shop cast. Oh, thank you. Jill, I love your attitude toward golf and toward knitting. I am looking forward to the sweater cow and trying out a new to me yarn from the Wooly Thistle. Yay. Thank you so much, Amy. We're glad you're joining us. Um, if you can email us at info at the Wooly Thistle, put prize winner in all caps, we will get you your $25 gift card. Indeed. Congratulations, Amy. And yes, if you want to be in the running for next time, uh, all you need to do is uh, leave us a comment down below, subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. So that's wonderful, Amy. Good for you. And just get in touch and we'll get that right out to you. Um, I was going to say, so we're going to jump into what's new in the shop. There's some really exciting things that have landed um, in the shop. I'm really excited about yeah, this. Yeah, let's, let's have um, a look. So I think uh, 
first and foremost, uh, although in no ranking order, because all of these are wonderful. They're all wonderful. Um, it's that time of year. Oh, uh, I quite like this. West Yorkshire Spinners has released this year's Holiday Sock Yarn. I um, like it. This year it is called Yuletide. It is sparkly. Oh. It is gold sparkly, oh. which feels feels new. None of the others were gold sparkly. Oh, wow. Um, the sparkles are soft. They are. It's not like that, you know, yeah. wiry stuff. Um, it is. It's really nice, really wonderful. And this is the matching green. That's a green in there. Yeah. Evergreen is the contrast color. So Ooh. if you're somebody who likes to get both and do the contrast tote toes and cups uh, and heels. You know, West Yorkshire Spinner's sock yarn never, ever, ever disappoints. It does. It, it is soft great. and it's strong. I mean, this is a super wash yarn, which we allow because we love it. And it feels it feels nice and woolly. Like it's It is a wash, woolly yarn, it yes. And it's all British wool too, which mm -hmm. we really like. But every year they come out with a new design and they're always wonderful. Yeah. But I really kind of like this. This is really, really nice. Yep. Yeah. When you purchase a ball of um, Yuletide, you will also get a download for their free pattern, Noel, um, which goes along with Yuletide. Yes, which is a lovely <coughs> pattern uh, designed specifically for this sock yarn. Yep, and it is designed by Winnick, Winnick Mum. Mum. Um, who designs, she does a lot of designs for West Yorkshire spinners. And you can see that it's striping. That's all just this ball here. Yep. So it's striping and blippy and doing all the things, mm -hmm. and it even includes the heel. So you you would uh, contrast it with this if you wanted to, or you just knit the entire sock in here. And we have loads of people who come back every year and knit, you know, um, loved ones socks and gets a couple of pairs going. Yeah. If you are there. looking for any of the previous year's colorways, they are also available Yay! in the shop. Um, we have holly berry, candy cane, and fairy lights. Oh, they do such a good and job. And <laughs> we also have last year's, which was Nutcracker, um, Silent Night. Yeah, so pretty. Blue in the middle, very sparkly, and Vintage Tinsel. Lots of sparkles. Lots of sparkles. These two are not sparkly. These are the only yeah. two non-sparkles, Holly Berry and Candy Cane, yep. which you knitted, and you're adorable in your elfin socks. Yes. Yes. Lovely. All right. So all of those are available in the shop now. Do we have contrasting greens and reds? Yeah. And I believe on the, we have a whole page set up for the West Yorkshire spinners. I don't know why that's hard for me to say. Um, all of their holiday colorways. And we do have a list there of which contrast colors go with which. Okay. Sounds yarns. good. So lovely, yeah. lovely. What else do we have? Flalalopi. Uh, yes, I'm not sure how you say this, but I've been saying Fiala Lopi all around the shop. Um, Fiala Lopi is a DK weight um, new Lopi yarn, and we have so many. Look at oh, that. this is so, so good. This is, is a lighter weight Lopi yarn. Yeah. Wow. So if you're a fan of uh, Let Lopi or Alifos Lopi, um, I think you're going to love this. It is a DK weight Lopi yarn. And it feels really much uh, lighter than a regular let lopi which i think will always do well no matter what but i think it's pretty smart of them to come in with a slightly lighter weight as well because yeah. they do have the lace weight which we stock mm -hmm. but this is in between so very nice yeah very so nice. if you're looking to knit an icelandic style sweater yeah. but maybe you want a, a lighter weight. lighter yeah um, there was quite a bit of enthusiasm for this yarn coming in both our Ravelry groups and our Facebook groups. Um, I think you all somehow had it on your radar that um, <laughs> Lopi was releasing a new yarn. Yay. And it is now available in the shop. So come and get it. Yes. Wonderful. Lots Beautiful colors. colors. Should we go through the colors like we do? We can, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm holding right here because I think the numbers are always different. Yep. For the different. The first okay, four. so 3051 is their cream. This one is 3024. Oh, this one I want to. I knew you'd go for that pink. <laughs> 3072 matches my complexion today. <laughs> I'm having another power surge. All right. Um, a nice light gray, 3054. Oh, we got some stuff together. Yep. Um, 3040. Lovely honey yellow. Yeah, and this one is 3041. A nice little dark gold. 3025 is a nice sort of soft blue, violety blue. 3004, which is a nice brown. Yeah, just want to show you these four together I are know. really cute. You can really what just kind of, like, look at this. You just kind of yeah. pick four colors and, and they just go together. And we literally are just randomly yeah, picking them. that was random. Um, 
3001 is their oatmeal-y color, looks natural. 3023, all right, look at this. This is totally like a sweater right here. That's there gorgeous. Go. I love it. And so is this. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Um, oh, here we open. have 3002. 3060. I've got a navy blue, 3020. 3032. I love this lime green. Oh, yeah, that's good. So good. Just want to um, show you those two blues together. So this is 3025 mm -hmm. and the navy 3020. A nice red 3061. Juicy berry. Mm -hmm. Oh, another blue. Sorry, I'm grabbing all your blues. That's all right. 3022. Nice light Don't blue. share the blues. <laughs> 3073. Nice purple. And... 3071, nice pink. Um, and here is the dark gray and a light gray. Mm. The darker gray is 3058, and the lighter gray is 3056. Yum, yum. Very nice. A nice deep Ooh. brown here, 3003. Do you want to do those? I'm, I'm holding the basket. Yep. Uh, 3030, nice bottle green or forest green. 3059 is a black. Oh, I like this. Mm -hmm. 3031, a very nice green. That's a nice heathering. Mm -hmm. And then another blue, 3021. Kind of a brighter oh. mid blue. So welcome to very Fiala nice. Lobi. It is available in the shop now. Yes, very exciting. There are some pattern suggestion ideas already on the page. So if, oh, you're, good. if you're keen to knit with it but not sure to what to make, we've put some ideas there. All right, so next up is... Um, Peace Place is back in stock. So we grabbed a couple of colors, pink just for you, oh. um, and a lovely gray, rabbit gray. Now, what weight yarn is this? Remind me. Um, this is a heavy worsted weight. It's so fun. It's so lovely. And it it's is. so heathery. Yeah, it's wonderful. So this is back in stock this week. So color? this is back mm. in stock. That landed and that gray um, is last good. week. Um, so if you've been waiting for Peace Fleece to come back. What um, a great sweater uh, yes. knit this would be. Oh, gorgeous. Even, yes. yes, even if you start late, you'll be able to finish this. I was just going to no say time. that. I know we're casting on today, but, you know, if you're not ready to start today, that's fine. Cast on when you're ready. Um, it's, it's just it's just about knitting together. Yeah, there is no rule of, like, you have to cast on on cast on day. So if, you, if you're if you busy on cast on day or you just haven't picked your sweater yeah. pattern yet, um, you can jump in anytime. So um, our experience with selling Peace Fleece has been that you guys love it. And mm -hmm. it is quite hard to get in any quantity. So if you're interested in this... I wouldn't wait around. Right. Yes. Yep. There are lots of colors available in the shop. This Good. is just a small sample. Good. Scottish Yarn Festival is restocked. It, yeah. um, it is wonderful. It is just, it's so special. And we are proud to have um, two colorways of a new Aran weight. So this is a worsted weight. British Aran equals U.S. worsted um, in these two colors. This one is Baird. And this one is Tate. Both are Scottish clan names and uh, very soft mm -hmm. and made with uh, Cheviot with a little Shetland uh, blended in there too. Yeah. Made in the UK and 100% wool and it's yep. gorgeous. And the, um, at least at the time that you're watching this, the DK and the four ply are fully stocked. Ooh, um, it does look all good. all the colors, uh, a beautiful array of colors. Um, so don't wait. Yes, yes. I know we, we do hear from people who... Um, Missed out the last couple of times that mm -hmm. we've restocked. So yeah. it's here now. It is a wonderful yarn. It is. Um, it's, it's just, it feels lovely. It's nice and soft. I think very easy to wear next to skin. Oh, absolutely. It's on the softer side of things. Just gorgeous. Very Scottish. Um, created by Eva, who is the founder of the Scottish Yarn Festival, which is her, held in Perth every year. And she does an awful lot to elevate Scottish wool over there in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Yes, so happy to be supporting her with this. Um, also available now in the shop. Sorry, I keep popping up from the floor, but that is where we have things. Um, it is Knitted Calabella 2. It's here. It is here. It is off of pre-order. Copies are still available. It is wonderful. Even just the cover design. Yeah. Um, lots of lopey sweaters in this one mm. and just lots of great. Yeah, and we have sweaters. kits uh, for a lot of these Yeah, too. there are at least three kits in the shop that go with um, accompanying patterns. For, for your book. ease of shopping. But of mm -hmm. course, you can make up your own um, 
you know, order of what you need if you yeah. wanted to knit from something that we don't have a kit made yeah, for. Yeah, and if you're looking for any assistance in putting colors together, just send us an email and Jill will hook you up. Yep, definitely. She'll We're take care very of happy to do that always. Oh, the Zelba ball is here. The Zauber balls are oh. here. So um, these were featured in our sock bags this year, and they are now available for individual purchase in the shop. We've got about 10 colorways in the shop. Oh, which each ball has about 10 colorways right in there. Right. So yeah. much fun. I, I have just, knitted with this before and really I enjoyed it. I, that's color. what I've knitted, yeah. yeah. They yeah. were just wonderful. Yeah. So the, this is uh, Zauber ball. It's made in Germany, which feels very... Um, on point for us mm -hmm. and uh let me i'm just trying to find the I details say it's an 80 20 oh it's a 75 a 25 um and they have switched to a 25 percent biodegradable polyamide very um, nice it will not biodegrade on your feet yes it has no. to have all the right um conditions conditions for that but so it, you get the durability of nylon but also knowing that it's biodegradable yes so all of these are available in the shop now. We can tell you what the colors are. This one's 533645, which is very pretty, I think. Yes. I love how they wind them. This one is 2170. And this one is 2231. Oh, wait, am I reading the wrong guides. number? Where's... It is this one. Oh, so this one here is 2334. My apologies. That's okay. And this one here is 25. Two eight, another really nice one. I love mm. these colors. This one is two four seven three. So these are going to knit up, you know, sort of barber pulley and very potato chippy knitting for wonderful for socks, but you could knit anything. Uh, one five one one. Yeah, I think this is also if you're knitting a color work pattern where they use a color changing yarn yes. in the background and, and a finger solid. Light, it's yes, a really good choice. Yeah. This one is two three one one. Ooh. If you are a matchy matchy sock person. These will not make matchy matchy socks, but they'll be so fun. Yeah. Two, three, five, five, which is slightly different from two, three, three, four. Yes. And we have five. two, three, nine, five. I really like this Ooh, one. Ooh, I like, I like all of them. I they're like really, this. they're all great. Two, five, one, four. A little more subdued maybe with those grays. Yeah. But lots going on and just really fun to knit. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So that is also available in the shop now. Woohoo! Um, so much good cutter. stuff. We've got a treasure trove here. All Maggie, right. why don't you tell the nice people what's in our basket? So um, filled in our basket is Briggs & Little. Um, it is a combination of their Heritage yarn and their Regal yarn. Heritage is their Aran weight. Which one is this? This is Heritage. It is an Aran weight. Now Briggs and Little, though, to back up. Yeah, Briggs and Little is the oldest mill in Canada. Um, so this is Canadian wool. It's really wonderful. We've heard from lots of you um, that you wanted us to carry Briggs and Little. It's and very well known, I think. Yeah. And it's been around a long time, but it really does sort of work with what we're doing here too. So it's about time we brought it in. Yeah, this is a woolly yarn that um, it's going to feel good on your needles yeah. and it's going to wear like iron and just get better and better and better with age. Yeah. Um, it, I think it really exemplifies all the things we love about woolly wool. Yes. Um, and I think it comes from um, the Canadian Maritimes way up the East mm -hmm. Coast. So very uh, want to hardy. Say New sheep. Brunswick. New Brunswick, yes. So mm -hmm. very hardy up there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so let's let's look at some colors, shall we? Yeah, so we'll we'll try to go through the heritage first. Uh, the basket's a little bit mixed. So again, the heritage is the Aran weight, and this is the red heather color. Um, you can see that there's lots of different colors in there. Um, it's really wonderful. And this is an American Aran weight, so we really mean Aran weight. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then sheep's gray, which looks very tan to my eyes. Uh huh. Um, Actually, it looks great in mine. Isn't yeah, that funny? Yeah, see, it is one of those. Like, yeah. Um, this one is brown heather. Really nice. Lots of colors in there. There's one. Mm -hmm. This one is light gray. Which is wonderful. Let's see. Evergreen. I love evergreen. There's so many colors in there. Mauve, which really looks kind of purple. <laughs> um, this one is great. Mulberry. Uh -huh. um, Jill is knitting her sweater cow sweater with mulberry. Ooh. This watch feels amazing. Oh, I can't wait to see. Um, sea foam, which is a lovely greenish blue. 
very dark, that mm. North Atlantic sea foam. Yeah. Um, dark gray. Just a nice classic dark I love dark that. Gray. Um, natural white. Just these two. These two. Let's see. We have rag, um, which is the marl. And medium gray. Gorgeous. Yeah, so really here are <laughs> a handful of Briggs and Little. Um, really good stuff. Just really wonderful. Yes. And we'll just get better with time too. Yes. Um, and now the Regal feels very similar, but it is a worsted weight. This is color 77 and the Regal is their worsted weight. You just said Maggie, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And dark gray, which is lovely. Sort of a charcoal-y heather. Uh, grape. Oh, wait, I'm getting stuck. That's a really fun colorway. Yeah. Um, brown heather. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is pretty too. Turquoise. Turquoise. Oh, wonderful. I know. Blue heather. Not sure how you say that. Quaddy blue. What is That's a quaddy? I have no idea. Oh, it's, it's almost showing as a sort of purpley yeah, color. Yeah, you can see next to each other. Yeah. Oh, that's great. It's interesting to see it next to each other. The quaddy blue is here, and we've got blue heather. Yeah. This here is teal blue. Mm -hmm. I like this. Copper. Yeah. It's very pinky peachy. Hi, Bill. Warm. Mm -hmm. uh, plum. Very pretty. Mm hmm Oh, and we got mulberry again, or was that in the other way? Um, is this in is, both ways? This is the heritage. So. Oh, sorry, that's okay. So no mulberry, no mulberry in the regal, and uh, red. red. There you go. And there's actually a whole little basket here at your feet. Oh yeah. Of more, I think that that's all regal. Okay, let's have a wee looky. So, oh, oh, oh. I know this one's called yellow. Whoa. Yellow whoa. <laughs> I think it's like sorbet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then there's a beautiful natural white, mm -hmm. which is creamy. We've got red, which we already saw, but that's it again. Um, this one here is Fundy Fog. I like that one. Yeah, it's like lilac-y. Mm -hmm. uh, forest Brown. And Light Brown, which is like a fawn. Really warm and lovely. Yeah. Ooh, Meadow Green. That's pretty. Mm. Very sea foamy. Mm -hmm. Sea foam anywhere else in the world. And light gray. That's it. That is it. That's that a lot. Is, that is more than I can physically hold up. I know. You want to throw some in here? I, I really do. <laughs> a treasure chest. Yeah. So, a gorgeous Canadian wool. Very happy to have them at long last. Yes. Very affordable and will we'll literally be a joy to knit with and yeah. last for years to come. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So let us know how you get on with it. We'd love yeah. to see your knits, hear about your plans, all of that. Maggie, can you throw that over yeah. there? We can't let a shop cast go by without mentioning our 12 days box of cheer, which is on pre-order right now. You guys are definitely responding. So thank you for that. Um, we are partnering with Emma of the Woolly Mammoth. So that's what's in here. You get a full skein plus five minis, which I think are 20 grams. That sounds right. And um, a plethora of lovely secret little gifts in there too um our theme is sort of a vintage holiday uh season mm -hmm. and we're very proud of this box it's going to be great they, these will start shipping out when maggie early november right so um but they're great for uh putting under the christmas tree or keeping for the traditional 12 days of Christmas, which starts Christmas Day, mm -hmm. and you could do one a day. Some people open them all at the same time. I'm not sure which camp I fall into, honestly. Um, and Or have it for a New Year's, um, help you through the blahs of January. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have a few pre-orders left, and uh, definitely if you're interested, I would jump on that. And then we've got the book stitch marker uh, promo going right now where if you spend $125, you get the progress keeper with eight jump rings for free. And Maggie is digging around looking for that right now. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I hear it. There we go. Here we go. Here's your little tin. <laughs> Can't get it open. <laughs> and it is it's really cute. Isn't that cute? I can't see. You got it. <laughs> 
you've got oh, an yeah. option of either um, either using it as a stitch marker or it also has a Progress Keeper clasp on it. Love it. Um, and it's a cute little book. Perfect that is really adorable. School. Yes. And yes. it also comes with uh, a number of just simple stitch marker rings. Yep, which are always good to have oh, because they I always end up down the back of the couch. So mm -hmm. the more you have, the happier you are. Yes, always <laughs> check the vacuum. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I think that's everything, Maggie. I think that is it. Yes. So I think all that's left to say before I go is don't forget that we have excellent shipping rates now where you get free shipping on any order over $99 within the U.S. And if not, it's $4.95. So that is the best we can do. And it's a pretty darn good rate, I mm -hmm. think. Don't forget your pips. Be sure to sign up so that you get your pips and that you that can help you when you're spending as well. All right, Maggie, I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting. Bye. Bye.